Welcome to another episode of the Dental Insiders podcast with your host, Matthew Petchel and Michael Dunn. Dental Insiders is a podcast for dentists, dental team members, and industry professionals. We'll share stories and lessons from clinicians and industry visionaries with the goal of providing an entertaining, informative look at the industry that we share. Our guest today is none other than Dr. Mark Hyman. Welcome, Dr. Hyman. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. This is really exciting. This is exciting. Um, you know, in, we know a lot of people, right? We know a lot of people in the like industry. Like to say we do, yeah. This guy is one of my favorite people. This is, yeah. This he, is, is a guy, he is one of those guys that sort of, he, he just knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. And he's likable. And he's right down the road and he's in Greensboro, knowledge. North Carolina. He is. He is. And so I like him. I'm going gonna to hop right into it. Jump. Let's jump right into it. Let's go. Dr. Hyman, what do you love about practicing dentistry? Guys, again, thanks for having me. This is just really cool. I'm honored to be available for you all here. What do I love about dentistry? Uh, dentistry is a hoot. I really don't know what I would do if I had a real job. <laughs> if you think about it, I, mean, I tell people I have no skills or abilities. I, I love that in dentistry, there's no Groundhog Day. Every day is different. It is really, I consider it a privilege to do what we do. And people put a tremendous amount of faith in us. You think about it, we invade all five of their senses, their sight, smell, taste, touch, sound. So it's a very personal, interactive thing. And um, I love that we get to make a profound difference in people's lives, and very few of them die when we're working on them. <laughs> very few. Right? It fits really well into what I need for me as a dentist, as a restorative cosmetic guy. You know, we see kids, we see grandparents, and we do some really cool cosmetic reconstructive stuff. Every day is different. Pretty much every hour is different. And so that, I, I love that part of dentistry. I love the trust and faith that people have put into me. For me, I've been in private practice of almost 30 years. So I've got some four generation families, people that I cared for great grandma, and now I've got the great grandchild. Now this is the South, so it's less of a stretch. Michael can relate to that. <laughs> but, um, that's just really cool. In fact, with, the, with one family, I've been bit twice in my career in 30 years of private practice. And it's the same family. It's a great grandmother and the granddaughter. And I was working on the great granddaughter. She started to bite down. I'm like, oh, no, you don't. <laughs> generations of this family bite me. But that, that's just really cool. I love being Dr. Mark to people. I love being part of their family. I love celebrating at their happy times and hugging them and weeping with the pain that life happens. With. Right. So, um, you know, luckily, the greatest luckily, thing going. It is, I agree. Yeah. And luckily, in, in the type of work we do, I've never been bitten. So, <sighs> not at work. <laughs> and we'll, we'll leave it at that. Yep. So uh, real quick, why don't you give us a little, I like to get a little practice profile from, from the people that we talk to, just so everybody can get a gauge on, you know, what size, you know, how many chairs, how many whatever, so they can get a sense for, for what you do in, in your operation. Yeah, I, I was proved to went to dental school at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. I'm a Tar Heel. I did a two-year residency at UNC as well. And then bought basically a stalled practice July 1st, 1986. They had two and a half employees. Now we have 11. We have eight operatories. I have our young partner, Dr. Travis Bell, is with us. And we have two hygienists, treatment coordinator, four dental assistants, two business team members, and a half-time accounts payable person. One of the great gifts to me working with these women, our, one of our office administrators has been with me 24 years. Our lead dental assistant, Tina Calloway, has been with me 16 years. Uh, several of our hygienists, 14 years. That, it's just a, it's an amazing gift, again, when you can be part of the patient's lives, when you can be part of these women's lives, these teammates that have put their faith and trust in me to become part of the family. Um, we have two CAD CAM machines, two CERAC machines. We're a very high-tech office but very high touch as well. In this office, I'm in one of our consultation rooms. Um, we have two consultation rooms, so one of the key features of this practice, if you said to me, Dr. Mark, give me a pearl for, to be highly successful, we sit down and we out listen the competition. We sit down and we talk to everybody. If Michael was in the office, we'd say, Mikey, where are you from? Why'd you leave your last dentist? Tell me what's important to you. What's it gonna take to knock your socks off? We don't ask the insurance question. We care deeply that patients get the benefit they're entitled to, but it doesn't have anything to do with the treatment that we offer. So we sit down and we try to listen and say, and keep asking questions. Tell me more. How do you mean? What's this mean to you? What's success going to look like? You just left another dentist. I want this to be the 
last office you come to. So what's it going to take for me to knock your socks off? And that's really a cool part. I try to say in my seminar, guys, at the end of the new patient experience, everybody sits in this consultation room and we talk. At the end of that, the patient has said yes to me and I haven't even examined them yet. And in these turbulent times in dentistry, that's a really cool thing that you've already got case acceptance and you haven't even picked up your mirror and explore. So um, that's been a very gratifying thing. Our, our level of case acceptance is extraordinary here. I, I think it's, it almost speaks to the obvious. You don't treat strangers, you treat friends. And um, Dale Carnegie organization says you buy from people you know, like, and trust. And so that, that's been a powerful thing for me. That's it. And did you learn that from, um, from a mentor or is that something you've just believed all along or how, how did you pick up on that? What was the moment that that became so vitally important to you? Right, guys, I, I've, I've stolen from everybody. So this right. is something I made up. My time inside of dentistry back in 1990, I started going to the Panky Institute, went through all six levels and I've taught at Panky. I've gone to Spear out in Scottsdale, Arizona a bunch. So inside of dentistry, Panky Spear has been a tremendous impact on me where Dr. Panky talked about getting to know your patient. And um, then outside of dentistry, the time and work that I've spent with the Dale Carnegie organization, I say this in my seminars, who would like to study material titled How to Win Friends and Influence People, right. you think? <laughs> that's been tremendous. So every teammate in my office has taken some level of Dale Carnegie training. Everybody's read Dale Carnegie. They've read Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Zap, Z-A-P-P, The Lightning of Empowerment, Who Moved My Cheese, Raving Fans, Good to Great. So we're a learning, growing organization. That's something, again, that I think is powerful for the doctors listening. If you read a good book, buy a dozen copies, give it out to your team and say, we're going to talk about it at the next team meeting. Right. So uh, part of the what's mandatory in this practice is that you continue to grow right. Right. and that you continue to move forward personally and professionally. And I think part of that gift you, I hear the average dental assistant stays at their practice 10 months and I've got people who've been with me 24 years, 16 years. That, that's just been one right. of the most qualifying things for me. Yeah. And that's, yeah. that's a, that's a combination of a lot of things, right? right. It's picking the right people, which right. it, it, hiring is a big part of the job and, and, nurturing them and helping them. But I think we may have just I think maybe unraveled a new business idea, which is Mark Hyman's uh, Dental Book Club. I think so. Where once a month we find a book that right. he recommends, right. and then we talk about it. I think we should go this, buy There that. might be something here. We're gonna go buy that URL All as right. soon as we're done here. Barnes yeah. Noble or Amazon. We can Oprah's in big trouble, guys. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You may or may not be involved. Yeah. We may just use a cartoon character. Right. You, right. Doctor. Right. Right. <laughs> we'll see. No, of course we would. We'll explore that and get back to you. So we're 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 hearing you. Um, I'm hearing in your voice a lot of passion, especially around around um, a well functioning team. Yeah. So if I'm if I were a well, whether I'm a new dentist or an or a or an experienced dentist. What advice would you give for, for hiring new staff and, and, and the interview process for, for, for new staff members? Right. I, guys, I think I've got that one down cold. Is I screen resumes basically for big picture things, and then we have somebody come in and they spend a day in the office where they observe and they hang and they go to lunch with the team with my charge card. And basically I do what the team says because the times over 30 years when I've got bit in the butt is when I've said, oh, this person's great. And I've hired him and the team is like, but, 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 wait a minute. We, <laughs> you, th you know, and so predominantly women are our auxiliaries in dentistry. And I like to say the teammates have ESPN. They have ESP. They read people better than male doctors do. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I had the one of the worst hires ever. A woman came in and said, I think Dean Smith is God long-time UNC basketball coach. And I agreed. I'm like, okay, you're hired. One of the worst <laughs> hires ever. So uh, that was stupid. And so really I trust the women, my teammates that I work for. That's the way I consider it. And um, they, they know what's going to work in our office. And if somebody comes in and says, well, when's my morning and afternoon break? And when do I get a raise? And what's in it for me? That's not going to fit in our office. I want people richly rewarded. I want to pay the highest salaries in town. I want the highest benefit package. But from that, 
we get an extraordinary effort back. Right. And I people come to me sometimes saying, man, I'd love to work for you. And I'm like, really? You think you want to come in early, work through lunch, stay late with a smile on your face? Yeah, if you really wanted that, come on, try it. <laughs> yeah, and I can actually say firsthand because a couple years ago, do you remember I, I was up there and shot a video in your practice and got to see his, his team. I mean, talk about well-oiled. It's Top Gun. I mean, top he gun, describes yeah. Top Gun, but I call it a machine. I mean, smiling, happy, what can I do for you? All that. And uh, I think we were shooting a video for Isolite. Yeah, I remember that. Years ago. Yeah, that was a good deal. Yeah, it was fun to see. So you, you mentioned the, the staff, which is so important. I think, it's, I think that's one of those things that most doctors realize is important. They realize it, right? They go, this is really important. But don't put that extra, the, the 100% into it, right? They don't they put they don't the emphasis on it. On the value of it. So you mentioned you just hired a new associate. Yeah. Um, how'd that go? Um, he's just a super duper star. Dr. Travis Bell actually was a patient of mine when he was nine years old. And so I asked him, well, what, what do you remember about coming to see me when you were a little kid? And he said he used to wear Duke basketball shirts to the office <laughs> and nuts and started squirting him and running around yelling at him. And he said, man, if this guy could be a dentist, anybody can. <laughs> What's been really cool, guys, I've had six former patients go to dental school, and that's been really flattering. Oh, wow. So catching back up with him later in life, he played D1 football, worked for Merck Pharmaceuticals for five years, then went back out his pre-dental requirements, finished dental school. So he's 34 years old. He's not fresh out of, the, out of dental school. And um, one of the neatest things that I did is, that besides talking to a ton of the faculty at UNC, where I'm an adjunct professor as well, I've worked a Missions of Mercy clinic with him where I assisted him for a whole day. And instead of sitting around drinking a cup of coffee and checking out Facebook, he just tore through patient after patient after patient, extraordinary work ethic. At 3.30, they made him stop for lunch. They made he and I go to the lunch area. We went there, there was Chick-fil-A sandwiches, two chicken sandwiches. He picked his up, two bites gone, said, let's roll back to Chick-fil-A. The drill and I was like this guy reminds me of someone I used to know yeah <laughs> and um it's been tremendous you know we work with Jameson management it's been a just life-changing for our practice I've worked with Kathy Jameson and her team for 15 years and Dr. Bell spent a lot of time with them as well so I think that's in conjunction I think before you bring in anybody I would say get your house in order get your systems immaculate and uh, there are a lot of wonderful organizations in dentistry, but nobody does it better than Jameson Management. And uh, like I said, we've worked for them for 15 years. We have six days of in-office consulting, monthly phone con leadership conversations, webinars, a weekly marketing call with their marketing guru, Misty Clark. So um, again, another thing from Carnegie, three magic words, success leaves clues. What a highly successful dentist do. Every successful dentist I know has a coach. You know, and I would say that to people, if you, if you already, if you don't think you need a coach and you don't have the practice of your dreams, why not? You say, well, I, I, I know I'm going to apply this stuff later, but if you're not already doing it, then a coach makes you responsible when you got skin in the game, when you put tens of thousands of dollars into your coaching, that, that makes it right. that makes you really responsible and responsive. And, uh, been the cheapest money I ever spent in dentistry. Yeah, and I think a lot of people do that. They think maybe that their partner or their associate or their spouse is going to be that coach. Yeah, right. Because there's so much of that going on in dentistry where there's I've got this person. We we're doing this together, yeah. and yeah. then you realize you get into the day to day and you get in the weeds, and you forget. And then there's no one. I think right. the, the what really I really picked up on there was being held accountable for it. Yep. And this uh, business coaches are like, look. No excuses. If we're done with excuses. It's, it's time to, to either do it or not right. do it. Let's make some decisions and get it going. And having an outside perspective, someone that's not there in, in the weeds day in and day out. Right. And has done it. Yeah, and has done it. Right. <laughs> so, for us, that, that's what I would say to people. If you, if you already knew it all, why, why, why haven't you applied it? Yep. And yes. the inertia kills me because basically – at minimum, when you bring in an exquisite coaching like Jameson, you only go up 30%. When I brought them in, I never once said I want to make more money. In a 24-month period, they added over $500,000 to our already seven-figure practice. I just said I want to stop the chaos. I don't, I don't need to make more money and incidentally 
putting in predictable systems, we went up over $500,000 in 24 months. Wow. That's good stuff. You can spoil your team. You can take care of your family. You can give heavily to your church, synagogue, right. your school, United Way. That's, there's, not, not a, there's not a whole lot of bad things that can happen when you make an extra couple hundred grand. Yep. And then you can share the love with people that you care about. Yeah, yeah there's, um, there's one of the mentors that I follow, you know, in, in advice that I take is like everybody wants the good life. But not everyone wants to do the work to have the good right. life, right? Every if, you, if we ask a thousand people, do you want the good life? Oh, yeah. Do you want to make oh, yeah. hundreds of thousands of dollars? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. But do you want to do the day to day and the? Are you going to put in the work and the work hours? To do it? Yeah. And it's truthfully, not a, a small of percentage of people actually do the work. So, um, so it's great to hear. It. Yeah, I'm going to shift gears here. Shifting. So I'm going to shift gears, and I think, I think I may know the answer to this next question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. All right. Talked earlier about having a high tech practice. Yes, sir. You're a technology guy. A little bit. What what one piece of technology has had the biggest, most positive impact on your practice? Right. And uh, Mikey, I appreciate that. If if you said to me one thing, bang, what is it? It's clearly intro cameras to me. I'm a DigiDot guy. I've got eight ops. I bought eight DigiDot cameras. We take a picture on every patient for every procedure before, during, and after. That has been the multi-million dollar idea for our practice. There's not a bad thing that can happen to you when you've got a color photo before you start a procedure. Then you take a during shot with the old alloy out, the old crown off for the hygienist to take a picture of a big hunk of tartar, and then take the after photo. And it just, again, it's, it proves that you made the right diagnosis. It helps the insurance company pay the benefits that the patient's entitled to. It helps patients look towards comprehensive optimal care. So again, I started with intro cameras in 1991 with the AccuCam that we had on the cart that you had to drag around. Right. And it was been, it's just been transformational. The Isolite has been huge for us as well. We work with the Envy Laser. That's a Denmat product. It's mm -hmm. a couple bucks to stop bleeders, biopsies, phrenectomies. It's just a there's no reason, and again, I'm, I'm a Sarac guy. I bought four versions of them. I've written that hundred thousand dollar check. You can spend less than five grand and transform your practice. So if you said, "What's the number one technology?" It's getting an intro camera like a DigiDoc. Number two would be the Isolite. We have eight ops. We have eight Isolites. And the third thing to me would be an, a portable laser like the Envy. Costs a couple bucks. We use it every day. So, so you mentioned you you take. Um and this, this was something that, that I don't think I've heard that much, or maybe even at all. You said you take the, a during treatment um, photo with the intraoral camera. I'm just curious, how do, patients, how do your patients react to those during treatment photos? They're like, oh my God. You know, the, what we hate to hear is, let me think about it. Let's watch it. Why did my last dentist tell me this? You must need a new car. Let's get a pre-denial from Aetna. Don't you want to smack them? So the beauty is you take a picture of one of those big MODFL TWA KLM alloys, <laughs> a little bit of enamel sticking out going, Yoo -hoo! and you take out the alloy, put some carriage detecting stain in, dry it out, take a during photo, and set the patient up and say, you know, you said this tooth wasn't hurting. We saw there were some changes going on. Look what's cooking underneath it. And they go, oh my God, turn that off. It looks terrible. And then you say, ma'am, let's look at the two teeth behind it. Looks like these were put in at the same time. These have served you beautifully. Ma'am, it just looks like it's past its expiration date. That's the verbal skills that we use. And often they'll say, well, can, when can I come back? And I say, do you have a couple of minutes? You're already numb. No time like the present. And so it's really rare that we do one tooth at a time because we ask the patients, Mikey, do you want to keep your teeth the rest of your life? Is it important? Do you want to save time? Do you want to save money? How many times do you want to come back and see me? How many times do you want a needle stuck in your gum? Right. Little things make a huge difference. So, and, and we've both seen you speak, um, you know, to, to Dennis, and you have this really wonderful, warm, you connecting know, way to connect. We're, we're seeing it right now. Yeah, right? and it's, um, how does that help in, so you, you sort of talked a little bit there about patient, like case acceptance with patients. How does this, that style of communicating help? Because I think that's, if everyone, right, if, if everyone could just get one more case accepted every day, yep. it'd, be, it'd be huge in, in most practices. So how do, you, how do they do that? You know, uh, I hope I'm being true to myself. I am a passionate guy. 
I love what I do. I am honored to, for the privilege of being in dentistry because that is what I consider it. It's a whole lot of hard work, but it's a privilege to do what we do. I'll say to new patients, there's 200 some dentists in Greensboro and you picked me. How can I not be enthusiastic about that? So um, kind of a recurring theme in the practice with the team, with the women that we try to hire, with the way the, for our new, new young partner, Dr. Bell, we look for passion, enthusiasm, and a sense of humor. So I think those three things rule. And I am passionate about doing dentistry and taking great care of folks. I show I have a lot of enthusiasm for everything that I do, from my family, from my Tar Heels, from my teammates, and, um, and having a sense of humor. You have to just sometimes laugh at yourselves because we just have funny things happen all the time. And I, I try to make that a Trump feature of my seminars is to show when we make mistakes when we have boo-boos and we make some really big old honking ones. And sometimes you just have to look at yourself and laugh and say, that was really something. <laughs> uh, one of my classic seminar photos is our, one of our superstar dental assistants, Meredith, in the middle of a procedure. She's got instruments in both hands and she's got the impression gun under her armpit. Cause where are you going to put it? And she's got this look on her face. Cause like, don't move. He's like, Oh no, he's going to get the camera. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> It's just too funny because we've all done it. Right. And um, I appreciate your nice words about my seminars. I love teaching and I love getting up and sharing our, the story of our type of dentistry. And I think one reason I've been successful from the podium is I show the real world of private practice and I show our mistakes. I show when I've gotten fired, when I got cocky during a case, didn't get a good pre-op, didn't get a good bite, got ahead of myself, didn't get a good consent for something. It happens the best of the best stub their toe and man, I sure fall face first and face plant all the time. And I'm just very humbled by that. There's a whole lot of people in dentistry that are a lot smarter than me and have better hands, but there are few people in my mind that outwork me and that outwork my team. And that just makes me really proud. I will say this in the seminar as well, guys, every single woman in the practice used to work for another dentist and now they're with me. So it was a why is that I've got this extraordinary team and colleagues of mine had these priceless gems and just didn't polish them. And I just, to me, to me I say, thank you. Right. Thank you for making a mistake and losing a bunch of superstars. Cause we just got a really cool group right now and we're not perfect. There are times we want to smack each other, but there's, there's a lot of love and affection and hugs and it's not contrived. These, the loyalty that I've had from these teammates has been extraordinary. And they're yeah. really, who I am today, and I'm very grateful for that. I think we may have an opportunity here for a, for a, a world's first. All right, for let's a, do it. A world premiere, if you will. All right, I'm ready. <clears throat> this so is, this could go. This could go well. This could not go well. We could, who we knows? Don't know. Try me. So if, yeah. if you would please tell us something that no one else knows. Oh God. About Dr. Mark Hyman. Are felonies included or no? Well, I mean, technically a judge would know about that. <laughs> Maybe a cellmate. Um, I finished dental school in three and a half years. I went to Israel and worked as a dentist. I bet you guys didn't know that. I worked there for four months, grew a beard, grew my, my hair long, tried to look like the brothers, played basketball every afternoon with the soldiers. And my last week there, I met my wife. Wow. And she picked me up on a bus in the Jerusalem bus station. Wow. Wow. That you is, know what? I think it was successful. I think question. that was successful. That was and good. on that, that note, I think, you know, thank you for joining us. When you realized she was standing in the bus station with her boyfriend and he put her on the bus for an overnight and she walked down the aisle, sat in the seat in front of me. We talked for four hours and got engaged five months later. Wow. wow. All, all because of dentistry. All because of dentistry. Because of dentistry. We really appreciate you spending yeah. some time with us today, Dr. Hyman. Thank Great you so stuff. much. Great stuff. The joy to see you both. I appreciate you doing this for the profession and thanks for your hard work and your passion. You're welcome. Thank so, you. so that wraps it up for another episode of the Dental Insiders. We want to thank our guest today, Dr. Mark Hyman, for joining us. Thank you. And thank you for spending some time with us. Yep. Please join us next time and make sure to tell your friends and colleagues about the Dental Insiders. Thanks. Have a great day. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you.